Science tells us that time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events that occur in apparently irreversible succession from the past, through the present, to the future. But for some people, the laws of time are broken when they experience a time slip or a glitch in time where a person or group of people travel through time into the supernatural rather than technological means. This experience can either be fascinating or downright terrifying when everything they believe in up to that moment is challenged. The following four stories are time slips that happen to people that challenged their perception of reality. Number four, baby monitor. It was the end of the day when Cherie was putting the last load of laundered clothes away in the bedroom when she heard voices coming from the baby monitor just a few feet away from her. At that time, her husband was quietly watching TV in the living room with their two-year-old son who was asleep. So who was making the noise on the baby monitor? Cherie then started to listen to what was coming out of the monitor and the sounds seemed very familiar. Earlier that day, she was in her child's bedroom putting folded clothes into the drawers and cleaning up the bedroom as a child sat in his bed. As she was cleaning, she was telling her son about the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. As she was listening to the baby monitor, she was shocked to hear the sounds of drawers being pulled open and shut and the rustling of toys and books being put away. Then Cherie was further shocked when she clearly heard her son's voice over the monitor. But how could she be hearing a son when she knew that he was asleep with her husband in the living room? She suddenly came to the realization that the monitor was literally replaying the events from earlier in the day. What made matters even more mysterious was that Cherie knew that the baby monitor was not a recorder but a standard monitor that she'd purchased from Walmart and only recorded sounds coming from the room as they were happening at present time only. She could clearly hear herself reading Jack and the Beanstalk and could also hear her son responding. But what was confusing Cherie was that she was hearing a repeat of events that happened five hours earlier on the same day. But again, reminding herself that the monitor was not able to record. So how could this happen? She quickly called her husband into the room to listen to her voice coming through the monitor, along with their sons laughing and chuckling. He was also as stunned as Cherie, as he stood and turned his head and looked at their son sleeping peacefully over his shoulder. He asked, how in the hell could this happen? And they both just looked at each other in shared disbelief. Strangely, this was a one-off event had it never happened before or since, and they quickly realised that they were listening to some kind of warp in time. Number three, the old house that wasn't there. In the summer of 1994, Suzanne, her husband and 12-year-old son, were carting wheat and were outside Molong in New South Wales, Australia, and drove past a for sale sign on a farm gate along with the agent's details. On the return journey, they decided to stop and check out the old house for sale. They climbed through the fence and walked up to the circle-shaped drive to have a closer look at the house. They could see through the window and found that the old house was abandoned. When they returned home, they decided to call the agent and get further details about the property as they liked the look of it and were interested in purchasing it. The agent had no idea what they were talking about and insisted that he had no properties for sale on that road. A week later, Suzanne and her husband returned to Merlong to have another look at the old farmhouse. They drove up and down the whole road until they were almost to the next town. All they could recognise was a water tank on the hill, a creek and some trees where the house used to be. There was no gate, drive, real estate sign or house. They knew they were at the right place, but at the wrong time. Number two, 
The Disappearing Rider Eula White was born in October 1912 and grew up in rural Alabama and Florida in the 1920s and recounts the following story from her childhood. One morning she was outside the farmhouse along with other women and children when they witnessed an unusual event. In those days Alabama was a different place with little electricity and the only transport for most people were horses and wagons. It was early in the morning on a bright summer day when Eula and some women and other children had gathered on the front porch of the Hawkins farmhouse to shell some peas and beans for preserving and were just talking amongst themselves. Mr Hawkins came out on the porch and told Mrs Hawkins that he was going to town on business. Mr Hawkins saddled his horse and as he rode through the big gate directly in front of the porch, Mrs Hawkins reminded him to bring home a big sack of flour. He answered her with a grunt and rode off. Around mid-afternoon, Eula and the women were still on the porch shelling peas and looked up and saw Mr Hawkins approaching the house. The road leading to the house came off the main road and ran directly up to the porch so they could see him coming quite clearly. Thrown across the saddle in front of him was a large white cloth sack of flour and cradled in his left arm was a brown bag of other groceries. They watched as he rode up to the gate and as he stopped there waiting for someone to open it, one of the boys ran to the gate and opened it. Then, in full view of all the women and children, Mr Hawkins vanished. He just disappeared in an instant. Everybody sat there astonished. Then after a few seconds, they suddenly realised what had happened and were terrified and started screaming. After a few minutes, they calmed down, but were still shaking and confused after witnessing this strange event. But after a short while, they went back to shelling peas. However, everyone continued to look around warily and had huddled together on the porch as if for protection. Then Mrs Hawkins made one of the boys close the gate. About half hour later, they looked up and again saw Mr Hawkins riding toward the house with that same white sack of flour across the saddle in front of him and that same brown bag of groceries in his left hand. Again he rode up to the gate without a sound and stopped. This time everybody just stared as they were too terrified to approach the gate, too afraid to move, wondering whether it would happen again. Finally to their relief, Mr Hawkins screamed out, well, is someone going to open the front gate for me? So, what had happened a half hour earlier? How did this man manage to arrive at the gate and then immediately disappear in front of so many witnesses? Number one, take him back to childhood. What would you do if you suddenly found yourself caught up in a time slip? Panic or just enjoy the experience? The following event happened to Naomi West, who at the time was a senior in college. One afternoon, Naomi had laid down for a nap and was just about to fall asleep when she began to feel a spinning sensation. Then she entered into a dream state. The dream began with her floating through the air and into her early childhood bedroom on Hurricane Creek Road in West Virginia. She floated down until she was sitting on the carpet. The carpet and decor were yellow, as they had been in her childhood before they had redecorated. As she was observing this childhood scenery, she felt a sense of panic. Had she suddenly become stuck in the past? She scrambled to her feet and raced to open the bedroom door and quickly ran through the hallway to her parents' room. As she was running down the hallway, she could see that everything was decorated as it was in her childhood. She rushed into her parents' room and could see her dad sleeping with his face to the wall as he used to do. Her mother was sitting up and sewing or mending something. She ran to her and threw her arms around her and screamed out, Mum, you've got to pray for me. I'm stuck in a... She started to say dream but stopped, worried that she would scare her. Her mother was watching her with alarm. Naomi then looked out the window of the balcony to the backyard and asked, Are we on Hurricane Street Road? Yes, her mother answered, still watching her in concern. 
Then she closed her eyes and started praying to get out of this childhood time slip. When she opened her eyes again, she found herself back in her own time. Had this really happened or had she just woken up from a weird dream? She then told herself that it was a dream and decided to go back to sleep and finish her nap. But as she closed her eyes, the spinning sensation came back. At this stage, she was so freaked out that she decided not to take a nap and got up. What would you do if you had a dream that was so real and so vivid that took you back to your childhood in your old house with your parents? Would you want to further explore your childhood adventures, playing with your friends again in that familiar environment? Would you want to stay there and enjoy the innocence of childhood again? Or would you panic because you realise that you have been displaced in time and just wanted to get back to your current surroundings?